So in previous videos, we looked at the MST-80 here. Uh, we ended up uh, pr programming a set of ROMs for it. So we have the uh, original monitor here and these two ROMs. And then uh, if you've seen the video, uh, we went ahead and, and recreated the DAISY program to play the song DAISY over you know, an AM radio. And the entry points for it are in this third ROM. So these are the system monitor. This is a user space. Uh, so with that done, I began to explore the system more now that it was running. And one of the things I wanted to explore was the single step switch down here. You should be able to click the single step and then use the step key here to step through code. That doesn't work. Uh, I spent a whole lot of time in a previous video, a couple of them, trying to figure out what was going on. And, and we'll redo a little bit of that work here uh, and talk about it. And then we'll look at what I think the actual issue is. So the system's reset. We've got uh, ROM. So it's page zero, page one, page two. So on the machine, it's address 0000 to 00 FF, 0100 to 01 FF, 0200 to 02 FF, page zero, one, and two. So I can go ahead and set the entry point here to page two, load high, 00, and run. It'll start executing the code out of this ROM. And what you're seeing down here on the display, hopefully it's coming through, is the note data as the notes are being played. We can't hear anything because I don't have the radio hooked up. But I believe I should be able to go into single step mode and see this stop, and I should be able to step through the code, and it doesn't stop running. And so there was a lot of confusion with me about why that was. Let's go ahead and reset. And if we tear a bit into the schematic, we can start to look. So I've got the logic probe here hooked up to what should be 5 volts, and it is. Uh, run and single step. So it goes to the input here of this switch. Oh, no, of, well, we can't get to that point. It goes to either, we should see it potentially on pin 13 here. When I hit single step, oh, come on, fingers. Okay, so we see single step occurring there. And if we go to pin nine now, we'll see it occurring there as well. And if I go back to run mode, pin nine is high. So that, that's working correctly. There's the run switch up here. Hopefully this is coming through on camera. There's the run switch up here and then the step switch. This is the run switch, this is the step switch. So the switch is acting correctly, but the system isn't stepping. And I don't know why. And what I discovered as I worked through the schematic here, looked at signals, looked at signals, is when I got to this uh, D flip-flop on pin five and six, which is sitting right here. Let's see if I can get the... Pin five and pin six. Well, six has an output. Five doesn't seem to have an output. There's just, just there was something funky with this part here that I just didn't really understand. Uh, if we look at pin 9, again, no output. Uh, it, it's just bizarre. Uh, it's just bizarre here. Whatever's going on with this part. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's just not acting the way it should. It's almost like these outputs are open. And the part, of course, is a 7474. And so I went ahead and swapped in a different 7474 and then a third one and it didn't resolve this. We can actually demonstrate what happens here when I do that. So let's go ahead and pull this 7474 out. Let me get a chip puller here. Make this a little bit easier to do. So this is the 7474 in the socket here. We'll go ahead and pull it out. And there's some replacement sitting here. That's a 7400. 7474. There's one right there. And we'll go ahead and put him in and we'll power up here and notice the system didn't reset and no matter what I do the system won't run at this point and so this really confused me why this was true it's just the system's frozen and pulling the 7474 back out let me turn the power off and powering up the system resets and operates, you know, load high, zero, zero, run. We can see it running the note data out here. 
So without the flip-flop in place, it runs. With the original one in, it runs because the outputs, a couple of the outputs on this 7400 are fried, or 7474 are fried. And that just led to a whole lot of confusion and a lot more logic probing around and seeing things working and led me kind of down the trail to maybe the 8224 was bad. So the 8224 sitting here, I ordered a couple of replacements. I haven't tried them yet. But it really bothered me the two pins had no signal. It was originally in here on the 7474. And the new one, of course, has, has signals coming out. And I finally blew up the section of the schematic so I could get a better look here. And I don't know if you notice the difference between the schematic and what was found on the board at this point or not. So they call it a 7479 here as these two flip-flops. I've never heard of a 7479. I'm very familiar with the 7474. It makes sense when this was original size. You know, it was easy to mistake that for 7474. Uh, but it called for a 7479 there. And, and I'm like, well, that's kind of really weird and strange. Uh, let me go dig. And I did a bunch of digging for 7474s. I had nothing here. I could find nothing in my huge collection of TTLICs. I finally got up on unicornelectronics.com. And, of course, they had 7479s in stock. They were a little bit spendy because it's unique part. I ordered two of them. And at this point, I want to see if that resolves the issue here. If the, if the system will now single step. Oh, I filled, I filled a lead, I think, bend up under. Or maybe not. Brand new, new uh, new old stock part. Its date code is from the 38th week of 78, so it's not a misfit here in the system. Let's put it in the socket, and let's see if the system will power up and run, first thing. So do we see the display reset? We do. Well, that's a good sign. Remember with the 7474 in here, the system wouldn't reset or run. 02, load high, 00, zero run. If I click down to single step, it's not pausing. So obviously something still isn't working correctly. Uh, load high zero zero run of course I'm making assumptions here about how single step works so there's obviously something still incorrect there so but we're in better shape at least the system runs with the part in place so let's go ahead and take a look at signals again so switch 5 ends up feeding pin 13 and pin 9 on the 7400 here so there's 13. We can see it clocking as it should. We're in single step mode. And pin 8 is the other output. And we should see it. It's going high to low. And they should be going low to high. So those two outputs look valid for the key mount circuit here. Those feed pin 11. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. On the 7479, we see it creating a step pulse there. That feeds to 7400 pin 2, which is over here. 7400, that should be going to 7400 pin 2. So pin 9. Weren't we just looking at pin 9 and saying it was clocking? Oh, I do remember this. It fires once and then doesn't fire again until it's completely reset. This is what got me thinking the 8224 was bad when I saw it because ultimately it generates the reset signal that feeds up into every place here for reset. Ready. Uh, where did reset come in at? Reset. It's fed out of pin 1, phase 2 on pin 3. There was so much confusion here. I'm, I'm going to cycle the power again. I do remember this one. Once it was latched, it was latched, and I couldn't clear it. So pin 3 of the 7479 should be clocking. It should have the phase 2 clock on it. And it doesn't. 
Phase 2 clock coming out of the 8224 is on pin 6, which I believe is this pin right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're running phase 2 clock out and the phase 1 and phase 2 clock outs are on pin 11 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're seeing clocking. There's 10 and there's 11. So there's the actual phase two driver. So what is this phase two right here that feeds off to phase two over here, I believe. So let's power down and do some continuity work here. Let me release those. And I want to see where the connection is going to. So 74, 79, pin 3, I think goes to pin 6 here, and it does. So what I'm seeing in the schematic is the two clocks that come directly into the 8080 are driving here. There's an, a, a phase 2 output here as well. I don't know why there's two phase 2 outputs, but there is on this pin 6. That does connect up to here, but we're seeing it sit low all the time. Uh, so let me pull the 7479 back out just to make sure the problem isn't there. And we'll apply power again and we'll look at that phase two signal again. And it's not clocking. Uh, pin one is the reset. And if I hit reset, we should see that clock high. Oops, I just slipped off. We should see that clock high. So the question is why on pin 6 am I not seeing a clock? So let's turn the power off again. Uh, we said that's pin 6 coming out of the 8224 which is this pin right here. It is shorted to ground. That's a good reason for it not to clock. It's shorted to ground. Why is it shorted to ground? Is it the IC itself? I need to bring back one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll try to get continuity down in there without screwing the pin up. Is it the chip? Well, let's substitute in one of the replacement 8224s I ordered. It's funny that it's... There's an issue with it, but it's separate from the issue I thought I might have, but that's why we troubleshoot. So let's get it in. Let's now look at pin 6 to ground and see again if we have a short. Pin 6. And we don't. So there's something wrong with this 8224. It's pin 6 is shorted to ground. So let's put back in now the 7479. Let's power back up. Set our page to zero 02, set our run start address at zero. And if I go single step, are we single stepping? I would exp the problem is, is there's a really long delay loop here. Reset. Uh, single step. How can I tell if it's actually single stepping? Ultimately, it would be the ready pin on the 8080. Let's go back to run, 0, 2, load high, 0, 0, run. We go to pin 23. So 21, 22, 23 is ready on the 8080. 
and there it is we see it step we have fixed single step so I am now convinced this is single stepping the ready pin so if we go back to run the ready will go high it's an active high signal so we're, we're telling the 8080 the system's ready for it to run and it, it will be running here and when we take single step low uh, ready goes low saying pause we don't want you to do anything but each time I hit step it, it, it has a little pulse that comes to it you can see the pulse light flash which is the run the next instruction and then halt run the next instruction and halt so I'm sure it won't clock on its own it's got to be that's pretty sweet so bad 8224 let's go ahead and power down now and I let's put the original 74 74 back in here and I think that will or the one that well yeah it's the original it's the one that was in the system when it was delivered to me which is sitting it's not that one 74 04 74 74 oh it's sitting down here that's why I'm not spotting it I would expect this to not work now. Uh, power up, system reset. We're in single step mode here, and but I can still do things from the keyboard. The system's obviously not single stepping. So my guess at what happened here, and it's purely a guess, is a couple of things probably the 8224 phase 2 I suspect that's the phase 2 TTL output although I don't know that for sure failed uh, and that would stop the single step circuit from operating because in the, in the end it doesn't clear this flip-flop and that's what I was seeing is we'd get latched in single step and couldn't get back out and by uh, the C pin here which is clock gets yeah, clock I said clear earlier it's clock Without that clock doing anything, the, the whatever's on D won't get uh, clocked through to Q. So that would keep the system from running. And I suspect somebody at some point uh, from there didn't realize it was at phase two and went on to maybe swap into 7474 here and did a bunch of playing. Something else that was done, and I'll hold the board up here, hopefully it'll be in camera, is these two top pins here had a wire strap and they were connected together and I didn't understand why that was in place uh, and I've cut that little strap and I've bent it out of the way I'm going to clean this wiring up back here but uh, th those two top pins were shorted together and that to me was also a mystery why those pins would be shorted and I suspect again that was somebody trying to fudge the system to get it running uh, but we have a fully operating system now it looks like so I'm really pleased with that uh, we're in single step. I would eventually expect to see. Well, let's reset. I would, well, let's just let it run up and reset. Uh, zero two, load high. Zero zero, run. I would expect it at some point to ride out to the display here. Well, let's look at the Z80 a little, or the 8080 a little more. Let's look at A0 on pin 25. So 21, T23, 24. There's A0. And you can see it clocking here as we... So we know that A0 is moving. A1 is one pin up. We should see him clocking. So we are single stepping. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that we're not single stepping. We're, we're seeing addresses step and we're seeing a1 at half basically divided by two of a0 and this will be even slower and it is but yeah it's fetching instructions and doing its thing so i'm very pleased very pleased uh i don't know why that isn't running there it goes i needed to hit the run button so there we go we have a fully functional now MST80, you know, Lawrence Livermore Labs MST80. It's a nice example. Uh, it's an MST80A, I believe, was the variant. The 8080, the, the variant A has a software configuration for whether the display here is octal or hex. And I can, actually, I got to stop first. 
if I so I need to reset. I can change the display to octal or hex, and you'll see the, the, this digit out here come on or off. Got to be in the monitor to do this. In this variant, the switching that controls how the the data gets routed to the displays here is is done in hardware. On the original machine, there was a jumper block over here that strapped whether it was octal or hex. Uh, so in this case, we do a 002, which is the same as 02 hex, but a load high 00 zero because we want all zeros for the low address and there it is you know it's displaying an octal so is there ever going to be a value greater than I don't honestly know let's go ahead and stop it go to page two go to address zero zero display the contents oh I need to change it over to hex yeah, we just saw one go by. There's a 302, so there's a jump. The 00041 uh, or 21 in hex, 041 in octal. Anyhow, uh, just so it's mentioned as well, let's go ahead and put the original 8080 back in. I did replace the 8080 with one from my stock just to get a hand on if that was an issue or not. This is kind of a bear to do because I have to actually disengage the zero insertion force socket by pulling the top of the socket up. That will release the part. I'm pretty sure this is the original. 3193-3519. I have no idea which one of these is older, but this should be the original part. And then you snap it down. So we've got the original ROMs back in the system. These are the original ROMs. They've been erased with whatever that program was that was in them and the correct monitor code programmed into them. There was some kind of user software again in this ROM 3 that I, I don't know what it was. It was erased and the DAISY code that we wrote and programmed is in it. We've got the original 8080 back in. We've got a replacement 8224 because the one that was in here was bad. We've got a 7479 we replaced. Because there was a 7474 here and it was a bad 7474, it had output issues. We've replaced all the capacitors uh, with at least ones that measured correctly. This is supposed to be a 47 microfarad here, or a 4.7 microfarad. I've got a 47 in there. The original capacitors were these that were 5 microfarad. It looks like these were 5 microfarad. The closest I had in an axial lead was 47 and for the power supply smoothing that's absolutely fine so these are replaced a bunch of these were really leaky uh, and the capacitance was way off this is supposed to be a 4.7 or a 5 here so when we hit reset it's a little longer to get reset because of the RC time constant here there's a zener diode down here the zener that was in here was bad this is for the minus 5 volt supply I replaced that zener as well uh, so we got the minus 5 volt correctly out on the board. Let's go to octal 002. Load the high byte or address 000. And that's the low address and start the system running. And there it goes. Very pleased. Very, very pleased. That just makes me very happy. Uh, we did no work on the power supply. It didn't need it at this point. A little more ripple than I'd like, but it just old caps. But the ripple's so high above the actual regulated voltages that it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, I guess the only other thing that was done was the TI chips with the really corroded leads. All the TI chips were removed, and I cleaned the leads. I uh, used a little fiber pen and cleaned the leads up just so they were a little shinier, a little cleaner, and put those chips back in. We've tested. The four RAMs down here on the retro chip tester, and they tested good, which was really nice. These are uh, 2112s, which are pretty rare, and, and they're from this, the fourth week of 76 and the 18th week of 76. So they're old. Those are old parts, my God, from 76. Uh, anything else I've touched on? I mean, next will be to play with, of course, the outputs and everything going on down here. Uh, I look forward to that. That'll be cool. I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. Thank you to Unicorn Electronics for their vintage TTL.
like I say, I was able to find 7479s there. They weren't cheap, uh, but they're you old and unique. I, I couldn't even find a data sheet for a long time on a 7479. I have no idea what the variation is from 7474, but there obviously is one. Uh, I think we can wrap up here. I can't think of anything else to add to this. So if you got this far in the video, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the viewers. Any comments, I read them all. I'd appreciate it if you need to comment. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Uh, and if you're not subscribed and think I'm worth subscribing to, subscribe. I'm not a monetized channel, uh, which is why you don't get ads. Uh, I do this solely as a hobby uh, and like to share it with people. So I could talk forever, as you probably know. I will shut up now, and we will see you in a future video.